Hey there, block builders. It is Vicki Howell here to show you how to do the stitch pattern for block number two of our block builder club. All right, so this month we are working on what we're calling heightened herringbone. And what it is, is a mixture of stockinette columns with these lacy crisscross herringbone columns. It's really pretty and it's only a two row repeat, so it's not all that difficult, but it has tons of interest. And we've chosen for ours to do some striping. That is absolutely up to you whether, whether or not you go that route. But for what I'm gonna be teaching today, we're just gonna cover what this stitch pattern is. So following your Block Builder Club e-booklet instructions, you'll cast on the number of stitches that you need for our 16 inch block. We've also included, of course, um, some other gauges. We're using Montoya Merino for ours. But um, if you are not using an Aran or heavy worsted, you might want to check out the other gauge um, instructions. Okay, so as I mentioned, this pattern is worked in two rows. So the first row, which in our pattern is actually row five because of our border, sti our border stitches, we're on a right side and we are going to begin with this repeat. We're going to do a yarn over, and this is after you've done your edging stitches, which are also in the pattern. Slip one, knit two, and then you're going to pass that slip stitch over both of the stitches that you just knit and let it drop off the, the needle. Then we're going to knit three. and that is your pattern repeat. So let's try that again. We are going to yarn over, slip one, and we're slipping one purl-wise, knit two, pass that slip stitch over both of those knit stitches. So that's the herringbone portion. Now we move on to the stockinette portion. We knit three. So you repeat that as the pattern calls for until you get to your sort of last round of stitches, your last three stitches minus your whatever your border is. Um, for us, that's four stitches, but um, you know you might be doing something different. So your last stitches before you get to whatever your border stitches are. So we are going to then do one more yarn over, slip one, knit two, pass the slip stitch over. For my swatch, I just have one edging stitch. Like I said, if you're making our block, you're gonna you're going to have four. So you're ending with that herringbone repeat. All right, so that's your right side. Now we're gonna flip our piece over. And again, you'd work whatever your edging stitches are, your border stitches. I just have one in mind for my swatch. Now we're going to yarn over. We're gonna slip one. So the same so far, but here's where we change a little. Now we're going to purl. So we take our yarn over and we just continue it by bringing the yarn forward. We'll purl two. And then we wanna slip that slip stitch over both of those purl stitches and let them fall off. So it's the same thing, but just in reverse since we are working stockinette stitch, we're on the wrong side as we did on the right side, essentially. All right, now we're going to purl three stitches and then we're going to repeat. So we yarn over, which since we're starting from the purl position just means we're just lifting our yarn up. We slip the stitch purl-wise. This is sort of where you finish the yarn overs by bringing the yarn in front for your purl stitches. You purl two, and then pass the two stitches over. I'm just moving my yarn in back just because for me that's easier, but we'll need it back in the front in a second. So we slip the stitch over the two stitches and then we go back to our stockinette portion, which is purling three. And we're going to end with, just as we did on the right side, with the last of our herringbone stitch portion, which means yarn over, slip one, purl two, slip that purl stitch, over the two, 
let it drop off. I'm going to undo that because I got in the middle of my plies. But I'm going to leave that in this video because that happens. That's very normal for a yarn that's as squishy as the one that I'm working with because it's made with many plies. It's the same thing that gives it the loft and the squishiness. So there are a couple trade-offs here. All right, so yarn over, slip one, purl two, slip the stitch, the slipped stitch over the two purl stitches, and then you'd work your edging. For me, that's just one stitch. And that is it. Those are the two rows that you repeat. If you decide to do stripes, you can just change your colors at any interval that you'd like or in the pattern we've written where, where we did ours. But that is it. Just those two rows make this really beautiful, textured, almost rib-like looking piece. All right, have fun.